Hello, this is Echo here. I'm going to see another video, and today we'll be discussing the hate that Booby gets, which I don't understand, but I'm not, but we'll not be discussing it alone here. I have a guest this time. A guest. So, for ado, I introduce you someone who will be helping me with this Neo's Gamer. What's good? This is Neo Scammer 04 or Neo Cyber if any of you know me on Twitter or Instagram. But yeah, as my buddy Acno said, today we'll be discussing, well, the hatred that the series known as Ruby tends to get. Now, yeah. whether, whether we'd say if it's warranted or if some of it is maybe a little unneeded, well, that's the part we're about to figure out once we get into this. Yeah. So, Neos, you know, can you kind of explain what the hate movie gets? Like, I don't understand the hate. Like, I think it just has something to do with haters want to be haters, so. Well, from some of my understanding of it, at least from some of the stuff that I have seen regarding the hate some of the, that the show gets... A part of it kind of has to do with, I guess, like some of the criticisms on how some characters have been written or really just like the direction that the show takes. Like that's one of the many things I've heard about where sometimes it is like uh, like it is like actual criticism, like constructive criticism. And other times it's full on hatred regarding that. Like, uh, like, I guess one way I could take it, that's kind of how the later parts of the series have kind of been uh, interpreted by most people who see it, which I'd say this is probably a problem that people have kind of had with the series, at least since I want to say volume four, but I don't think people really started to talk about like uh, really where the series went or if the series was really like going downhill to around volume five like at least from whatever can recall that's kind of the place where some of it where some of that discourse started it seems like from as the series continues on that's kind of where it keeps going to and I guess well, another, oh, sorry go ahead no continue i was going to say i guess another part of that probably has to do with uh I guess this one perception people have where some people will say that the careers of the show was uh, ruining Monty Ohm's vision, which I w like, would I give them some leeway? That that would depend on that. That would depend on if we even knew what Monty's full vision for the show was, because from the way I look at it, how it is like when people try to use a criticism of saying, oh, they they destroyed Monty's vision or, oh, they're ruining it. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, nobody, tru like, nobody except for maybe the people at Rooster Teeth truly know what the guy's vision even was because, well, one, the people there were actually his friends, so I don't think they would deliberately try, and try to mess up his show. I, I don't think they would deliberately try to do that. Like, do you have your criticisms with the, like, could you have your criticisms with the show and probably not like some of the stuff that happened in it? I mean, sure, I even have my own criticisms with where the show had went in some of its later volumes, but I wouldn't go out, I, I wouldn't flat out say, oh, they ruined Monty's vision because it's like, we don't even know what that full vision even was. Like, we don't even know when, like, what exactly it would have been or every single thing besides just like the concept of how the series started out and even then monty himself wasn't even the main writer he mostly just wrote out like the outlines for some of the stuff that would happen in the series and obviously animated a lot of the stuff the animation stuff was mostly him while well like the writing duties was pretty much everybody else or at least like miles and carrie mostly at least like at, at that time before they decide to hire other writers to help out in like a since like volume seven to nine okay well i think it just has something to do with the fact that it's just haters wanting to be haters yeah for the show because 
to be honest, I have watched this. I'm going to be watching this show, and I've always seen it like once. And I'm going on my second viewing, but yeah, I think it's just haters wanting to be haters. I like, say that I would say there definitely are some people in there that probably are hating on it just to hate, since unfortunately a lot of things now have that where there's just some people just for some reason just try to hate on one thing while everybody else likes it. In the case of something like Ruby, though, I definitely do believe there are people who do hate it just to hate it, but I think there are other people where it's less of hate and more just they kind of have a lot of problems with the direction that the show took. At least that's one way I see it right now anyway, but I, like, I, I do agree with you on the part that there definitely are like some people in the community that definitely just hate the show outright or they probably liked it in the beginning but started to hate it as the show went on or something. Yeah, but I think to me, it's just criticism that's not really valid because, to be honest, I don't see the fighting issues with the show, and we don't see any of the fighting issues or with the characters or anything. Um, I would say there are a few. I guess like one of them probably has to do with uh, Robin, uh, Robin from like a volume 7 to 8. I guess it would be mostly how i guess like just how um how quick team ruby is to like trusting her over ironwood which the way how ironwood is written in the like in the later seasons of the show is pretty much written to be well a, a guy that you're meant to hate especially in the later season like in next season volume seven i'd say he was written to be somewhat nuanced but volume eight they just written him to be well Com- a complete maniac at that point. Volume seven, it, except here's another thing. Uh, I, I guess like this also kind of ties to Yang because the reason why she even has the, her, the mechanical arm in the first place was kind of because of him and the Atlas military. So it would kind of make you think, wouldn't it make some sense that she probably would feel a bit compl- conflicted about trusting him or not? Because I, I feel like in some in some sense maybe like early on she probably would have like some faith in him simply because of that because he did that for her like gave her a new arm but in another sense seeing like all the stuff he's doing or what he planned to do by basically trying to leave mantle in the dust would have made her start to be a bit conflicted and not want to trust him like i feel like something like that would have made more sense to have been implemented than simply just like you know not trusting him like just outright i mean like it like it builds up over time the more they see more of his characters what i'm trying to say here like i feel like that probably would have helped a little bit well yeah i can kind of see that but to be honest on the other hand this guy's pretty crazy when he comes to some of the stuff he does in the show. So why would you trust him? Yeah, but I'm saying I'm saying like before they see that, like I'm saying they should have had it feel more like it was a slow burn. I'm saying like basically at first you don't see those flaws until like until like as the story goes on, you hear more about this and then it would give you like that that sense where it's like Oh yeah, th- this guy definitely can't be trusted. He- he's not right in the head. It's like, yeah, he's definitely ambitious. He's definitely trying to do whatever he thinks would be best, like for the sake of uh, his people's safety. But at the same time, he's also doing this at like the detriment of everyone else's safety, where it's basically putting everyone else in danger. And that is what would, like, essentially make everybody realize that yeah, he's definitely not in his right mind. Like, I feel like that's something they could have done but they didn't really like take on like it they didn't like take on like the full potential of like something in that's in that story i'll say they at least tried with what they had but i feel like that would have at least been something that would have helped it be a little more believable i guess well yeah i guess so but to be honest 
I think the way they handled um, Ironwood was pretty well, in my opinion. So, yeah. They handled him well, in my opinion. So, I don't think they needed to change anything with him because he is still... Because he was still a lunatic in Fine 3. Even though he wasn't that much of a lunatic, he was still pretty much... You saw it a little bit in Volume 3 that he was doing stuff that was crazy that he shouldn't be doing, but not that much. At best, I'd say like him during Volume 3 was kind of cryptid and a bit of a flawed extreme, but I don't think you really see like... You definitely see some of the cracks there, but like not all the stuff that they tried to put on display in like the later parts of the show, like during the Atlas arc, they... I'm saying like that would have been like the point where they showed more of those cracks, but I feel like at that point they showed it a little too quickly or put it like way too in your face about it. Mainly in volume eight, I feel like they did that because it, like it, at least before then, there like volume three and seven, there was like a sense of nuance with how they did it. Like maybe not to the best of their abilities from what they showed, but there there still was a bit of a nuance there. Volume 8, they just simply make him feel more like a villain. Like, not even like a flawed or just one where it's like you can understand like how they're feeling. Like, just kind of just completely unsympathetic or anything in that season is what I mean. But not not as bad as wasn't by me. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I still think it, he could like him as a character, or just everything surrounding him and his and like his uh, involvement in the arcs could have been handled better. But I still feel like yeah, like him in volume three and somewhat of seven wasn't handled too badly compared to eight. But again, like. Again, like I said, that nuance is still there, but I feel like they could have done a little more with it. To just give it like a, a better impact than what was actually delivered. Yeah, I guess that's true. But but I wonder where all this hate started from. Do you know where the hate started from, Neos? Because I don't know how it started. <laughs> like, how did it start? Like again, I, I feel like it started somewhere around volume five at least. That was at the that in around volume six is really when I started to hear somewhat about it. And then volume around the time of volume seven, it really got out of hand. But I again I I'm not really sure like where exactly I guess would be like the best place to really pinpoint where any of the hatred for the show actually spawned from. Like it, I, like in this case, I think it's kind of hard to tell where exactly. Like if it was specifically something that happened in the show, or maybe it has something to do with like some of the people in the community, or it could be a mix of both. Like I can't exactly say like where what exact point is where you would pinpoint it at. Like m like my best guess again is like volume five, since I feel like that's really where most of the criticisms after like the. Uh, first arc in the series from like volume one and three really start the kick in volume four i could say since that is at the point where like the tonal shift for the series definitely began but at the same time i'm not sure if i'd really count it because i don't think too many people talked about it the the main thing i probably would hear some people say about volume four at best is either that they're indifferent about it they thought it was okay but maybe not the most eventful season or in other cases they'll either say it was kind of slow or it might have been a bit of filler to get to what happened later like that's the main thing i hear about that volume in particular like for that one i don't hear too much hate about i mostly just hear like mostly just mild indifference when it comes to that specific part of the series the later parts is really when i really when you actually start to hear about 
I guess like either some of the either like the hate and then like the actual criticism people have over it. Well, well, it's valid. Um, whether it's valid or not, I still think the show's pretty good, in my opinion. I don't think it deserves the criticism it gets. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the show was bad. I do like the show, but I do kind of agree, like on some points, that yeah, there are definitely some parts in the series that weren't really handled the best. Like they could have been handled a lot better. That's mostly how I am about volume five and a little bit of seven. But I don't. But like I don't like out outright hate those seasons. I kind of just like like I kind of just have like like my own criticisms, but really just how some things are done there. But I don't like outright hate them or anything. <sighs> well, volume five for me, I don't have any criticisms to that volume. To be honest, I actually enjoyed that volume. Volume seven, from what I remember, I think I enjoyed that volume. I think I can't remember because it's been like months since I've watched that volume. I'm currently on my watch, but yeah. But I think volume seven and eight are probably the best, better two volumes of the series. So yeah. With that said, I think all the questions that gets is sort of kind of a little bit not valid. Because, well, sort of kind of valid, but some of the criticisms it gets are pretty dumb from what I've heard. Because a lot of them just don't make sense to me. Like, Which wait. are some of the ones you heard? I can't remember exactly, but I think it has something to do with the way that um um the way that they treated um Boop. the way they, uh, I can't remember what how they treated I, uh like how Ruby was written in the show. Yeah, pretty much. That one I'd actually say was kind of valid. Like uh, I guess like uh her not really having too much to do because. Even though, like, I'd say she is one of my favorite characters from the show, I do actually like like the the character. But the thing is, I'll say this: I kind of feel like she didn't really have too much development to her after Volume Three until really only like a small bit of Volume Six, and then most of Volume Nine. Like, like say what you will about Volume Nine. Say if you you will if you think it's filler or you think it was kind of just like weirdly placed in especially with how volume eight ends but i feel like at least with that volume that volume was kind of needed at least like when it came to uh ruby's development because when like when looking back on it like on the show like i guess like uh in retrospect from like the other seasons a lot of the time the, some of the other characters are giving more focus than Ruby, which is like, I mean, yeah, considering that the show was mostly has like an ensemble cast, yeah, it, it kind of makes sense that you have like this big cast of characters. It would only make sense like through multiple episodes, you would give like each one like their own arc or development. Like John, which you kind of see the most, where even some people would even like, um, even suggest that he might have been like the main protagonist or central protagonist of the show, like at least for like a little while in those early volumes. And I don't know if I would say that completely, but I get the criticism for that because a lot of the episodes in like volumes one, two, and a little bit of three did kind of center around him like a good amount of the time. You could like, I guess like another point, um, you you also got the fact that some of the other characters too, like even the uh, Yang, Blake, and Weiss, kind of all have like their own definitive arcs. Even in a uh, even in Ice Queen, them in a sense, you could even still say that even the character in the focus of that. Right. Even though don't well, don't spoil um, Ice Queen for me. Because I, I'm I haven't I haven't, fin I haven't finished all of it, but I'm just like going by like what I do know about it. That like from what you can see of that series. 
It pretty much. I've like, yet to. A, I've like, yet to see it. I have to see it also. Please don't spoil it. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to. But from what I have saw, and like from like the idea that I've got from the episodes of it, I have seen. The show pretty much focuses mostly. Like it seems like the show itself is mostly like there to develop Weiss as a character, like as a character too. Even though it's like obviously in somewhat of a separate timeline from the original show where all the stuff that happened in like the first volume still happened, but then you had this other thing happening in like a dreamscape that happens later where it pretty much pictures Weiss essentially as well, the villain, or at least her seeing herself as like a, in a higher state of power compared to everybody else. Like that volume is, or little, that show is like mostly centered around her, even though the whole plot is about like everybody trying to save her from that vision. It still mostly centers around her as like basically like the protagonist of that series, but also her own like her own biggest enemy, like her basically her sense of pride and everything else was like her own biggest enemy during the events of that series. But then you've got the case for Ruby in the show where it's like, they pretty much frame it where it's like, yeah, she was meant to be the main character. Cause obviously with the fact that you got the red trailer and even the first episode of the show literally named after her, because she's the first character you see, you would think, oh yeah, she's the main protagonist. But then you've got the fact that a lot of the time you they I mean, yeah, they do give us like bits and pieces of stuff that ha- that has happened in her life or what really drove her to become like a huntress, like what's her reasoning behind that? But at the same time, they don't really give you that many details for it until then. And the biggest like I guess like the biggest event you could say that she's went through before like anything in the later seasons was basically like the uh the fall of beacon like the fall of beacon arc which basically would have served as like obviously a big turning stone like a big turning point for like the series that would have changed the series forever and in turn you would think oh that would have also changed ruby's perspective on a lot of things too but it it did but it also didn't either like we didn't really get to see like a good insight on like her psyche on how she's feeling about everything at that point like we like sure we did like see like how she felt when she witnessed penny's death during the tournament and then pura when she basically got well disintegrated by cinder after cinder took her power you can say she got smoked <laughs> you, you, how long have you been saving that one <laughs> a while yeah <laughs> It works though. It works, but yeah, basically when she got smoked, got smoked by Cinder. <laughs> oh, that, that sounds crazy to say, but but yeah, like basically after that, um, yeah, like sure, you do see like how Ruby is traumatized by that at that moment, but you don't really get like too much of an insight like during Volume Four or really any other point later on. To really like see how bad that really affected her, you definitely see it like on other characters, and and you also see it on John. You see like how the fall of Beacon affected Yang a lot, especially with her losing her arm trying to save her friends. But and of course like with Weiss as well, where she literally had to be like taken away and had to stay with her own family. And you do, did see like just how messed up and dysfunctional her family life is. But with Ruby, you didn't really get like too much of that going on like you didn't really see like too much of like how all this is affecting her like on the inside like you don't know if like she's like holding all of that back like she's probably just putting on a smile simply just to make not to make everybody else not worry too much about what she's been through or what she's seen like how she might actually be feeling like i, I would say if that was an intention they were trying to go with where they had so where it's like she was bottling all that up and basically had her putting on a smile just to make sure that nobody else would worry but was keeping how she actually felt about all that deep deep down then i'd say that that at least would be like something interesting they could try to do with but the thing is i don't think they really tried doing anything with that until really volume nine and i don't even think it was actually planned from the get-go 
Like, I think they kind of planned that part, like the whole thing about like really getting to see into that until like they actually started making like eight and nine. I feel like that's actually when they started to think about that. But before then, there really was nothing there, or at least like not enough like a uh, groundwork laid out where it literally tells you or, or at least gives you like any idea that this is what's going on in her head or anything. And I'd say even in volume seven, maybe you would think something about that probably would have like a uh, probably would have crossed her mind seeing that literally one of her best friends, Penny, was just miraculous miraculously came back to life. Well, obviously because she was rebuilt, but still. And while yeah, in volume nine, she does like get some idea of the fact that Penny died again and this time most likely permanently, since she's now actually a full on human after that, after the events of volume eight. Like you you would think something about that would have crossed her mind about her probably like feeling some guilt about Penny being killed or her like basically being afraid that Penny probably would die again and probably in a worse way considering the situation they're in right now might be way worse than how it went at the fall of Beacon and during the tournament, which was already bad enough when it was going on there. Like and the fall of Atlas, yeah. The the fall of Atlas is that's what I meant when I say like what's going on now. I meant by the fall of Atlas was what I was referring to when I meant by like the current events. Like oh, that I and, like and the events. I thought you meant like after. the current events of volume ten if that ever gets renewed. But okay. I I did hear they did have like a something new for Ruby plan, but it's not really like a volume ten. It's close, but not really. Something called a if from what I remember hearing, it was something called Ruby Volume Nine Beyond, where they basically are going over like the it, it's basically like fully making the stuff that they planned for volume nine that never really got greenlit. That was like basically on the cutting room floor. So I guess you can kind of look at this as like a bit of a, I guess, a director's cut, or you're basically seeing this as like what the characters that were still in Remnant, like uh, doing, like what were they doing when they were still in Atlas, like while Team Ruby is obviously still in the Ever After during that point before they got back. Like I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is from what I've heard about uh, Volume 9 Beyond exactly is, but Volume 10 itself, as far as I know, that one still... It hasn't really been been greenlit, and I'm not really sure when. And as far as I know, the Volume Nine uh, Beyond thing that that series is supposed to be like a a first members kind of thing for Rooster Teeth. So I'm guessing, like, if people decide to wait, actually pay, it won't money, be on Crunchy- Wait, it won't be on Crunchyroll. No, no, no. It's like a first members only thing. So you probably have to be on the. Uh, Rooster Teeth. Oh, man. That sucks. Yeah, it does. But I guess Rooster Teeth kind of needs money because, well, yeah, they're not really doing too hot. Warner Bros. as a whole isn't, but them especially. Like like I said like uh, the other time I was in here, Ruby is literally the only thing keeping them afloat right now at all. I would say Death Battle, but they literally got a whole channel for that. But everything else, everything else isn't really cutting it. Red versus blue, I'm not even sure if that's still going on, but that doesn't really seem to be too popular anymore. Camp Camp, they literally released like the last thing for that, um, li- literally just unannounced. Like they kind of just dropped it when nobody expected it to be there, and there was nothing announced for it. And even then, you could literally watch all of Camp Camp on YouTube for free. <laughs> Like, you don't even need the Rooster Teeth website or anything for that. Apparently, you could literally just search up on YouTube for, like, its free shows and movies, and it literally says that thing is up there for free. I checked it yesterday. Yeah. And then uh, I guess, like, the last two big things that they had was um, Nomad of Nowhere, which I don't even – I don't think that's really going to be coming back. I know the creator of that show was working on, like, another project, but – from what I've heard about the history for that show, the history for it was actually pretty troubling, and the show kind of got a little messed up like around the time that uh, the head of the animation uh, division for Rooster Teeth was... Uh, 
I forget the guy's name, but it was the same guy who created Genma. Like basically when he was like a uh, in control of that and basically like some stuff happened between him and the creator of Nomad of Nowhere. They had a bit of a falling out and then afterwards, well, he basically left the series and that kind of um well kind of fell fell to the wind. Whether that means if Nomad of Nowhere could still be revived i have no idea especially considering how long it's been you would think oh yeah well maybe since camp camp came back maybe there's a possibility but i don't know for sure because of how troubled the development was the development for nomad was so bad that literally there was no actual art direction or anything which is why the show kind of looks the way it did where it didn't really have like a full vision in mind because they really didn't hire anybody to do that and then I guess, like I said, Genlock, which was probably their biggest endeavor, but also was one that, yeah, and a lot of people didn't really like that show that much. And its second season, yeah, yeah, the less said about season two, the better, I think. But yeah, yeah, like in other words, yeah, Ru Ruby's really the only thing that they still got going right now. And even then, we don't even know when the next thing outside of volume nine beyond is going to you know happen well i think volume 10 will happen eventually probably if volume nine beyond does well yeah so. that, that's that's really what i'm believing right now that like the best case and scenario for like volume 10 like actually ever being greenlit is if it is if like a they actually see that volume nine beyond actually is doing well and they actually get enough money to fund for volume 10's development and even then i think they well then again i'd imagine they probably already got uh uh people back to like to i guess animate volume nine beyond since again like like i said the the last time when volume nine was in development and uh the two justice league crossovers like after those were finished the entire animation team was basically let go like everybody was basically gone after that which so, i don't still understand why but i'm it, pretty sure it probably has to do with the, some of like the mistreatment going on at a uh, rooster thief i think because i've heard like some like the work environment there hasn't really been the best like, especially with how some people have been uh, treated there, from what I remember hearing. Yeah, I guess. But with that said, word of criticism is valid. It's criticism just to be criticism, and I don't think it deserves all that hate that it gets. So with that said, I think this is a good place to end the video. And where the criticism is valid, I do agree with all the, most of the points that Niels made, and I do think the criticisms might not be valid. Might, maybe some might be valid, some might not be not. But with that said, I think I think the hate that Ruby gets is not well deserved because I do like the show and I think everything, every moment in the show is catches me off guard. So with that said, is that OG sent off? And this is Neos Gamer signing off. And remember, stay big, Ruby fans. <laughs> See you around, true believers. See you around. <laughs>